blessed good afternoon to each and every one as you join with us again for another midweek spiritual nuggets as we come apart in the middle of the week to pause and to reflect on God's holy word. We are the members of the Bethlehem and Faith Pastor, the Island of Barbados, and I am Pastor David Ince, who will be sharing in this moment of meditation as we come apart in the middle of the week. Let us go first to the Moravian daily text as we look at today's devotional. The daily text for today, Wednesday, April the 21st. See, I have tested you in the furnace of adversity. Isaiah 48 and verse 10. The hymn verse. Then e'en in storms I shall you know, my sure support and refuge too. In every trial I shall prove assuredly that God is love. And a doctrinal text. Blessed are you when people hate you and when you are excluded. Revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. Luke chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. The hymn verse. When the dark lord of loneliness prevails and all defeated joy and friendship die, come, be my joy, such love that never fails, pierce the self-pity of my shadow skies. And a prayer. Lord, we know that this journey of Christianity is not meant to be easy. We are asked to love when we are hated and to cultivate peace during times of conflict. Help us to lean on your guidance today and Lord God as we continue our journey with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this post-resurrection period may we Lord learn to lean on you to follow you where you would lead to go where you have called us to and not to count the cost knowing Lord that you have said to us that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us the Apostle Paul would remind us that if we put you first, you will take care of everything else. And Lord, though the road may be rocky, more though the challenges may be rough, we know, Lord, that you are there to smoothen the path before us and to bring us at last to that place that you have prepared for us. So bless us this afternoon, Lord, as we look to your word, speak to us that we may hear from you, and as we hear, may we heed and go forth and do as you have called us to do. Bless us now and be with us as we ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As we continue in our journey with Jesus post-resurrection, today I want for us to spend a little time looking at the subject of following our Lord. For that, we just want to go to John chapter 21, verses 14 to 23. And our meditation will come from this passage this afternoon. So John chapter 21, verses 14 to 23. And I'm reading from the New International Version. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said to Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned 
and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the same one who leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. And verse 23, because of this, the rumor spread abroad among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As for you, follow me. The call to follow Jesus is a call to let go of our past life. It is a call to look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to do the things that he's called us to do, to follow where he leads. The passage that we have just read, as we saw and heard, was the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples. If you re read the earlier ver uh, verses of this chapter, you know that Peter would have said to the other six that were with him, he goes fishing, he's going fishing. And the other said, we're coming too. It was a period in the life of the disciples where there still was much anxiety, much uncertainty. And even though this is now the third time that they were about to see the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they still weren't quite there yet. Remember, Jesus had told them what was going to happen. He was preparing them, but still, even though they knew that he was now alive, even though they had met him, they still were not quite sure. And so, even as we saw in our daily text, following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is not always easy. It's not an easy thing to do. And so the anxiety and the uncertainty continue to well up in, again, in them. And what did they do? They turned back. They went back to what they knew. Does this sound familiar? We only need to look back at the Old Testament when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt into the wilderness, into a place of uncertainty and anxiety. And even though the children of Israel were being led away from slavery and harsh punishment, in the face of uncertainty, they wanted to go back. And in a similar fashion, Peter and the other disciples facing an uncertain future went back to what they knew. But going back is never the answer when God is calling us into a new life. And as we saw with Peter and the other disciples at this point in time, even as they went back to fishing, remember, Jesus called them from being fishermen to being fishers of men. But they went back to being fishermen. God calls us to a place of greatness. We shouldn't be settling for a place of mediocrity. And so we see in the lives of the disciples that they go back to fishing. And in the earlier verses of this chapter, we are reminded that they caught nothing. That past life was now unproductive and unrewarding for them because God had called them to this new life. He had said, follow me. And in their moment of anxiety, of even despair, they went back, hoping to find what was left behind only to find that it was no longer there. But this also too comes, speaks to us in the here and now, as we too continue our journey with Jesus. Oftentimes there are challenges in our lives where God is calling us to 
we are uncertain, we are anxious. And so things like our careers can get in the way. Things like our jobs can get in the way because we are holding to them rather than holding to God. Things like those around us could become distractions. What did Peter ask? What about him, Lord? Speaking about John. And what was Jesus' reply? What is that to you? Follow me. So often we allow those around us to be distractions to us. So often when God calls us to a particular ministry, we are looking to see what others are doing in other parts of the vineyard. But what is that to us? We are called to follow him. So often God is calling us to a place of ministry, as I said earlier. And we are wondering, how is God going to supply my needs? And in that moment of doubt, we lean upon our own selves. We seek our own security. And as was mentioned earlier, the disciples did the same thing. They sought their own security by going back to what they knew, only to realize that that was now unproductive. As our Lord and Savior calls us to follow him, it is a call to place him first in our lives. It is a call to allow him to have the number one place, the priority in our lives. What does Matthew write in chapter 6 and verse 33? Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. And he will give you everything you need. God calls upon us to follow him, to trust him. And he will take care of us. So even in the midst of our anxiety and uncertainty, God is already working things out. The life of faith that God calls us to is just that, faith. We are to trust him. He knows the beginning from the end. And this was the call that the disciples were, were also called to, a life of faith. And we know that by the time they get to Pentecost, we see a transformed people where they are willing now to boldly stand and proclaim the gospel of salvation. No longer worried and concerned about these other things. Not that they didn't have concerns, but they had learned to trust God. They had learned to follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's what God is calling us to do also. To leave those things that are behind. The prophet Isaiah in speaking to an exiled people wrote in chapter 43 uh, verses 18 and 19. But forget all that. All that went before. All the hardship and the struggles. Forget all of that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do, for I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Isaiah was saying to the children of Israel, even as they came through that period of testing and trial, God has already prepared a way. God is saying to us, just as he said to them, Follow me. I already have the way prepared. Trust me. It may be difficulties, but the path has already been prepared. And like Peter, we may have those periods of uncertainty. In those moments, I call upon all of us to resist the temptation to go back, to avoid the distraction of others, and to keep pressing on towards the goal that God is calling us to. So when we hear the voice of Jesus say, follow me, let us be prepared to follow him. Let us focus upon him and do what he has called us to do. And hear the words of the apostle Paul as he wrote to the church in Philippi. I don't mean to say that I've already 
achieve these things or that they have already reached perfection, but they press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly praise for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. He presses on. Paul had his challenges. We will have our challenges. But if we are determined and committed to following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there is that praise awaiting us. There is that confidence that we can have in him, that he is there for us, never leaving us, never forsaking us. So my brothers and sisters, as we continue on our journey with Jesus in this post-resurrection period, let us heed the call to follow him by giving him the number one place in our lives, no matter the cost. For we know that all things will work out for us in the end. So let us therefore go forth and follow him. Let us pray. Our loving God and Heavenly Father, as you spoke to the Apostle Peter and encouraged him to follow you, so we hear your voice saying to us, follow you. And Lord, as we meditate upon these words, we recommit ourselves as Peter himself was recommitted at that time to following you. May we also seek to follow you. So bless us now, Heavenly Father, and continue to lead us up as we surrender our all to you, following you making you number one in our lives. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Before I go, I just want to remind us that we will have our Bible study this evening, 7.15, and we're encouraged to join with us. The credentials will be available. And if you uh, don't get them, you can always reach out to us via our platforms and there will be available to you. It will be on our web conferencing platform, and so you can join with us. So we begin the study of Jonah. And so I'm asking you just to read the, the entire book uh, with a focus on the first two chapters. Also on Saturday, the Touch and Go series continues for our youth. And this time it will be the, for the teenagers, the older, the older ones. And so here it's, Teenagers, be prepared to come together for a moment of fellowship and interaction and activities. And of course, on Sunday will be youth convention. So there will be no in-person worship at the various sanctuaries. We all join online uh, to support the youth as they have their youth convention, 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube coming from the Calvary Moravian Church. So until next time, may God continue to bless you and may you continue to follow him.